The job of a pond skimmer is to remove any surface debris from the pond. They work by creating surface tension. The pump is placed inside the skimming area. This sucks the water into that spot. To create the surface tension, the water needs to be quite shallow. This one here is my homemade skimmer. The pump sits in just a regular bucket and is covered with a coarse filter sponge. You can see all the dust, debris and snails that's pulled in. Without the skimming action, all this dust, pollen and leaves will sink to the bottom of the pond. You can see the water is being pinched down in between two large rocks to create the current. I used a piece of scrap liner uh, to make the water shallower. This just forces the water up uh, and into the skimmer. The shallow water and the narrow gap improves the surface friction which creates a better pull or suction into the skimmer. You can buy easy to install pond skimmers. This is my Aquascape small pond kit. It includes a skimmer which is hidden under this fake rock. It's very easy to remove the leaf basket and empty the skimmer. There's also a coarse sponge sitting above the pump. Normally there's a weird door that creates added surface tension, but my fish kept getting pulled into the skimmer and they couldn't get back out to the pond, so I had to pull the door off. It is a good little unit, but it is expensive. I feel like my makeshift skimmer on my other pond works just as well. So skimmers make maintenance heaps easier and provide a place to hide the pump. This is great for a natural looking pond. The skimmer should be placed at the opposite end of where the water enters the pond. This will give you the best push and pull effect. If you can, it's also a good idea to place the skimmer here in, in an area where the wind naturally blows the debris. This pond sits under a Japanese maple. <laughs> In autumn, there's heaps of leaves. Um, and they're all pulled over to where the skimmer is, and then I can just scoop them out with a net. Without the skimmer, all that leaf would sink to the bottom of the pond. I'd need to remove it by hand or with a pond back. To hide the skimmer, I just used some rocks and a little bit of wood. Um, I've planted a mini cog next to it. That'll soften and conceal some of the rocks over time. If you opt for the Aquascape skimmers, um, they practically hide themselves with the fake rock. So, in helping with maintenance, this is basically my maintenance on my ponds. I just get in, walk around, and stir all the sediments up. Now all that stuff that's suspended is pulled over into the skimmer. It's much more fun than netting it out or all that fiddling around with a pond back.
To clean the skimmer, I start by just uh, netting out as much of the debris and stuff as I can that's sitting there on the surface. Then I turn the pond pump off. Then I fill a bucket up with uh, pond water so that I can clean the coarse sponge. You can see I cut a little hole out in the sponge so that it can fit the pipe for the pump. It's important you use pond water to clean the sponge because that sponge is going to have um, plenty of good bacteria on it. Uh, you don't want to just use your hose um, with chlorine water because um, you'll kill it. Then I just put the sponge back in, um, put the bit of wood back and any rocks I removed, turn the pump on and let it do its thing. Oh, and that water you used to clean the sponge is great for the garden. So there's my take on what a skimmer does, how you can add a cheap version and why you should. If this has been helpful, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next in the next video. Bye.